Hey guys, coming to you from my house under construction over here, and I've got a brick front on my house. And you know how I nerd out on the details for durability. Today's build show is all about durability. You know, I live in a 1970s neighborhood. There's brick and stone fronts everywhere, but behind that, including what was behind this house, is typically not done very well. And the problem with brick is you can't tell what's behind it. You have no idea. Now remember that brick and stone, these are porous claddings. They're called reservoir claddings. They absorb water and water typically flows through them. So if I had a sprinkler going against the house, that water would go right to the backside of the brick very quickly. Now what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a detail to make sure that my wood framed building is not gonna get wet for the lifetime of the building. We're gonna be doing a brick ledge through wall flashing. Today's video is all about durability. Let's get going. All right guys, so we're back on my personal project. This is the real rebuild project. And I had brick on this house before. In fact, I saved it. I piled it all up and I had the masons come and chip it all back so I've got the original brick. Isn't that awesome? This brick is like 50 years old. And yet once I chip that mortar off, it's ready to be reused. Now I've got a wood frame structure and of course wood is susceptible to water damage. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that when I put that brick on, I'm doing everything I can to make sure that my house is not gonna get water onto the wood framing. If I do that, a wood frame building can last a long time, hundreds of years potentially. So let's talk about how I'm doing this. I've got brick on the front and this is a brick ledge, meaning this is actually gonna take the weight, bear the weight of the brick. And the house, the way it was built before, we've got about an inch and a half drop between the brick lug and where the framing starts. That's pretty typical. Most of the time uh, when the foundation guy comes, he's gonna lay either a two by six or a two by eight inside the formwork to, to form that uh, or to make that brick ledge. Now that drop is good for us. The problem though is we'd wanna make sure that no water is going back into the house. Now here's the detail I like to do, whether it's a brick ledge or whether it's siding. I'm using Prosico's joint and seam filler to really air seal and bug proof that gap but I really want to do a through wall flashing so that any water that gets past my brick and runs down the face here is going to hit that and have to kick out to the front. It's not going to sit here or pool here. It's going to have no way to back into the house. Now there's a bunch of ways you can do that and I've done some other videos on some flexible stainless flashings, but what I've got for you today is really a bomber solution. This is a through wall flashing made by uh, MortarNet. And what we're looking at here is a flashing on the front that's a heavy duty copper with a hem on there. And then bonded to that is a flexible copper. What it, what it basically is is a thin copper. You can see it, if we peel back the layers here, there's the copper, which is a pretty flexible material. And they bonded that to a facer material on the front and the back. That's what this red is. So it's gonna be more puncture proof and we're gonna make sure the masons when they lay brick on top aren't gonna puncture that flexible copper. Now copper is a great choice because it'll last literally for centuries without degrading on us. They also make this in stainless and I believe there's some other options as well for materials. But what you're looking at here is a flashing panel. This is actually coming as a five foot panel and you're gonna order these for however many linear feet you have. And you're also gonna order some accessory pieces for inside and outside corners. So check this out. They've got a preformed outside corner so that I'm not trying to make this uh, outside corner myself. This is a solid piece. And I'm gonna show you the full install in a second here, but let me show you the parts and pieces first. Here's the flashing panel. So here's a five foot piece of that. I've got about 75 linear feet on this house, so I ordered the, the amount of flashing that I needed for that. You're also gonna notice that it has this uh, kind of Brillo-like material on there. This is what they're really known for, and this is kind of where they started, I believe, was this type of material that's in a keystone shape. The idea is we're gonna lay the brick on top here, and then as water runs down, we're gonna make sure that there's a weep path out of the brick so that water can weep out. That's really important for us. And then this keystone shape is making sure that this doesn't get clogged up with mortar and, and that could potentially in the future stop that water from coming out. Now we're also gonna lace in when we do this brick job later, a thicker keystone material that they make that's made 
for the width of that air gap behind our brick. Typically it's about a one inch air gap, which in the old days was about the width of a mason's finger. So he could gap it automatically when he was laying the brick up against the wall by his finger depth, pretty standard. All right, let's get going on this install and let's show you the details. All right guys, let's talk through the install. It's relatively straightforward. Remember, just like anything in the house, we're gonna start at the lower section and work our way up shingle style. So we're gonna start at the corner and this is the corner that's closest to the front door. So I'm gonna use factory edges here. Knowing that this run on the front of my house is gonna have a cut, I'm gonna put the cut edge at the far edge. So I will see it less. Okay, so first step, we're gonna use the outside corner. I'm just gonna use a pencil here and mark out where this corner goes so that I can get my sealant correct on here. Now we're using their BTL1 sealant. This is a butyl sealant. It's black, so if we have any that spills over, uh, it's gonna kinda go away in the shadows. And we're gonna do a nice bead on here. And all this is really doing for us is making sure that nothing backs up beyond the sealant when it comes down. We wanna make sure we have enough of a bead so that it's gonna adhere to that concrete. You'll also notice that this is a remodel job and my foundation was fairly ugly. Uh, I had them underpin before I put this on so that nothing would get on it. Okay, next step is this outside corner boot. And this is a, it looks like a neoprene material. I'm not sure, I'll have to look that up and verify. But what we're gonna do is put this on next and I've already pencil marked this one. And again, you're seeing that this is going to run over top of this. Now on this one, we're gonna put a nice bead all the way on the outside of this. And then once this goes on, we'll be ready for our first panel. So on this one, we're gonna, we're gonna butter the back of this, run a nice bead all the way across. And you see, we're just using a nice fat bead all the way across. Now butyl sealant, if you're not familiar with this, you've probably used it before and didn't realize it. It's the same as gutter sealant. It remains flexible and waterproof a long, long time. And those pencil marks help me because I can just see kind of where it goes. Now this one I'm not gonna mechanically attach because you're gonna see in a minute, we're gonna mechanically attach the next layer. This butyl will act like a little bit of an adhesive. Yep, see I got it on my hands already. Okay, now there's one panel in the, in the box that you're gonna get that's gonna be what they call a starter panel. And Luke, if you'll bring that down for me here. You're gonna notice that the starter panel is gonna have the keystone all the way to the edge. And what we're doing is we're basically just lining up this edge with this edge, and that's how it's gonna go. Now again, we're gonna put um, the sealant on the back side of this on all sides. So I'm gonna have Luke hold this for me, and we're gonna run that bead of sealant across. And then we're also gonna have a bead of sealant uh, in this joint right here in between these. And then ultimately we're gonna screw this in to the studs as best as possible. This is a, uh, what's called a starter strip or a, uh, not a starter strip, a termination bar rather. And this term bar is gonna squeeze out that sealant we're gonna put behind it. And we're either gonna tool that down or you'll notice there's kind of a, a back angle on there. We could also put a bead of sealant on that. You see this often used uh, with the Prosico fluid applied. And you could, really could use Prosico fluid applied. That's what this red stuff is right here. This is their fast flash material that I used on top of my zip system. All right, Luke, let's, uh, let's see if we can back butter this panel. You ready? And remember, this is where the concrete's going. I'm gonna do that one in a second. Now let's put a bead up at the starter strip. And I want a fat enough bead that it's gonna kind of uh, come out when I screw that panel on. All right guys, so all we're using for screws on this is just an exterior rated screw. And because we're on wood and not block framing, it's relatively easy. We're just gonna use a inch and a half or a two inch screw here. It's not carrying a lot of weight. We're just making sure it doesn't ever slide down on us in the future. There's a nice benefit of the uh, velocity screws. They hold onto the bit nicely. And we got a pencil mark on there that we translated into a, uh, look at that squeeze out, that's beautiful. All right, this goes quick, guys. Look at this panel install. It's going really quick. 
What's my overlap? You see, we got some good squeeze out on the overlap of the panels there. I need to lace in some uh, photos and some video too. When we took the brick off this house, the sheathing that was behind it was thermoply. And anywhere water had touched the brick, you could see that kind of greenish stain happening on the brick. And man, it, it just looked terrible behind there. There was no through wall flashing. There was no extra layer of protection like we're doing on this house. I really want this house to be a long lasting house. I plan on living here for at least a decade, uh, if not two decades. So we're gonna do this right. All right guys, I'm impressed. I gotta say this install is quick. This is our first time doing it and it hasn't been bad at all. You can see we came all the way across the front uh, with the panels here. And then the last step is gonna be tooling and striking a bead at the very top here. We wanna make sure that any water that's running down is gonna hit that turn bar that has a bead of sealant on it and run on top of the turn bar. And this butyl is a great sealant for this. It's gonna last a long, long time. And the copper too is a super long lasting durable detail. Now on my personal project, you'll notice my brick lug is a little wider than what I mentioned earlier. A lot of times a brick lug's a, a two by six brick lug, five and a half inches. This one's actually more like a two by eight because what I'm doing is I'm actually using two inches of foam on my project. And the foam's gonna need to go on before the brick. So the panel needed to go on, then I'm gonna be doing the foam. And then as we start laying the brick on here, we'll lay a few bricks up, maybe four courses or so. And then we're gonna use Mortarnet's Keystone solution. Now I've used this a bunch in the past. All this is gonna do is, is basically make sure that when that mortar drops down in the cavity, it's not gonna fill up the base and clog those weep holes on us. It's actually gonna stop that. So you'll see that brick will be right here. This is the one inch version. Any mortar that drops here is gonna leave this area right here clear so that I'll have a nice clear air path and a path for drainage on water. Guys, big thanks to Mortarnet. This is a really, really top of the line solution. You're gonna see this on uh, commercial buildings, schools, institutions. Anything that you wanna build that's really gonna last, this is your detail. I'll put a link in the description to all these products so you can see it. Uh, but this was my choice. Uh, I actually reached out to these guys for my personal house because I felt like this was the top of the line, the best detail for durability. And again, I love brick. You know, my neighborhood's full of it, 50 years old, still looks fantastic. Doesn't really need any maintenance, it just lasts. So this brick front of the house is gonna help me really fit in with my existing neighborhood that's 50 years old. Now, if you're not currently a subscriber to The Build Show, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new videos every Tuesday and every Friday. And if you're new around here, we focus on durability, efficiency, comfort, best practices, how to really do it right. And also, I have a website that I started a couple months ago with several other builders and an architect shooting their version of The Build Show called buildshownetwork.com. Check that out too. We've got new content every single workday going on over there. I'll put a link in the description to my newsletter you can sign up for that on Fridays it'll come out and give you an update. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.